Hi, and welcome to this Garden Gnome Software screencast. This screencast is going to look at Power 2 VR5 skin editor and an introduction to timers and the logic block. So to help show us um, how this works, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some projects together so you can see how I'm using them. OK, so in this first project, then we're going to look at timers. Now, I've got a text box here that um, displays the title of each panorama. So but having said that, on a small screen device, that text could be quite dominant. So what I want to do is wrap a timer around it and make the text box go after a few seconds. So let's have a look at our new tool, which is Draw Timer Tool. So I select that and I'm going to draw that around the text box. And straight away, you can see that the text box becomes a child of the timer and will adopt any action that the timer has. Now we can draw a timer as a separate um, entity or, or, or rather element in the skin and we can get it to affect other um, elements by actions. But in this case, I've drawn it around the text box so we're going to affect it directly. So if we have a look at the timer's properties, um, so we can see the timeout value is five seconds. I'm going to change that to three. And we have types of uh, the timer starts after either loaded or when the player initializes or when the player is inactive. I'm going to leave that at loaded. And then under repeat, we can have the timer to happen one time or we can have it to toggle. I only want it to happen one time because I want this text to show uh, to, to be hidden and once it's hidden, not come back again. OK, now this is a timer and by default, timers have a logic block assigned to visibility. Now you can see now we've got this funny little symbol of an arrow going upwards and an arrow going downwards. And this represents our logic of either true or false. So if we look under visibility, it's lit up to say there is a logic block running for visibility. And when I click it, we can see it. And there is the logic block settings. Now, bear with me on this. Um, as you can see, I've got a check mark to say visible is selected. So my default value is visible true. However, if you look at the logic block, when the logic block is doing whatever it's going to do, the visibility is going to be false. In other words, this text box will hide. So let's just look at the logic then. So whilst it's active, the timer is active because that's my trigger. The value is or here is going to be false. So if the value is to hide it, to make it false means that the logic block or rather the text box is going to be visible until the timeout. Once the timeout's happened, then this visible false. So the log, so the text box will then hide. So let's see this in operations. So if I click OK and we'll see that on live preview, there is my um, uh, title text. And after a few seconds, it disappears. OK, so that's the first um, look at timers and logic. Let's move on to the next project. OK, so what we're going to do now then is I've got this check mark and I want to make this appear when we've visited a node. So we're going to make a node visited check mark for our hotspot template. So if I select the um, graphic, uh, the, the little tick, you can see that it's set to visible and there's no logic here at all. So I'm going to click the logic block for visible. And what we're going to do is, um, unlike the timer um, that came default with a logic block set for visible, um, other elements don't. So this one, we're going to have to start a logic block from the start. So if I double click the trigger and you can see that I can then select several different triggers, but I'm going to select visited. And we're going to say that once it's visited and that equals true, visible is going to be equal true. So all I need to do really is hide the check mark. Um, because we've said once we visited a node, that's now going to be true. So let's close this, save it, publish out the tour. And we should see that here's our hotspot. Uh, and when we click on it, when we turn around, you can see that this is where we came from. So we've already been there. We've got the check mark. And this is a location that we need yet to see. So that hasn't. So there you go. That's using the logic block to, to create a visited check mark. And let's move on to the next project. In this project, what we're going to do is add a text box to make a tooltip for my point hotspot. But rather than using mouse enter and leave actions, we're going to use the logic block. So there's my text box. I'm going to make it a child of the hotspot template. And what I want to do is set the text box to display the correct text. So we've got this now, we've now got this little button and we're going to say for hotspots to show the hotspot title. And I want to make sure it's got auto size and I'll disable the scrollers. OK, so. To make this work, then I'm just going to set the visibility or deselect visible. And then under the logic block, what I'm going to do is set the trigger to mouse over parent. And when that becomes true, make visible true. That's it. 
now that will hide and show quite happily on mouse over so let's publish the project out and have a look and you can see that first and foremost there is the title from the first project and that disappears after the timer and now when I ho uh, hover over the point hotspot we've got the uh, tooltip hide and showing so that and that can also work with pop-up images and all sorts so yeah that's quite a good um, quite a good tip for the logic block right I've got one more project for you so let's move on to that okay in this last project what I want to do is show you how you can make uh, responsive skins and uh, now let's start off by adding some buttons so I'm going to open up the component toolbox I'm going to drag in the uh, simplex directional buttons and close that up I'm just going to place those to the bottom of the screen and anchor them to the center there we go bottom center and the idea is now that what I want to do is set up a logic block that when the screen reaches a certain size, these buttons are going to hide. So for small screen um, or for small displays, these buttons will hide. Right, and the way we're going to do that is going go to visibility. We're going to look at the logic block. And this time around, I'm going to use player height and equal to, say, 480 pixels high. And the operation is going to be, or rather the visibility is going to be false. So in other words, they're going to hide when the player is at 480. Now the thing I need to look at here is the comparison because at the moment the way it's set is at 479 the buttons will show and at 481 the buttons will show. They're only going to hide when it's actually at 480. So what I can do is change the comparison. I've got um, so equals to or not equals to and then I've got you know the less thans the more thans and the less thans than equal to. So that's what I'm going to select. So that basically if we talk through this when the player height is less than or equal to 480 pixels, then these buttons are going to hide because visible is going to be false. So there's the logic behind it. And if I just um, publish this out, click save and publish, we should see this all working. So here is um, my browser. And as soon as I make the browser a bit smaller, you see the buttons can now hide and show. Okay, now this obviously opens up a lot of possibilities because we can use the same logic towards uh, positioning for hiding and showing elements so you can now make truly responsive skins. Okay, so that's an introduction to timers and logic blocks. Thanks for watching.